Okay, how's everybody doing? So, um, I never actually thought I would get this video done. Uh, I think I mentioned in the community tab a little ways back, I, I took a little bit of a break when I was halfway into this. I was getting really frustrated with just trying to cover it. It was just, it was just I mean, look at my bench, right? Like, like I mean, all this was pure white. <laughs> so it was chaos, right? Literally paint chaos. You know, uh, as you know, very thin Tamiya's, and I use these model layers as well. Now, what I did was, is I sprayed them with a really dark umber, reddish kind of burnt umber base, right? This was just the typical raw umber with some hull red. Then I threw hull red on it, you know, 50-50. This is about 50-50 as well. And then I start getting thinner from there. And then, then what I did was, is I... Um, I sprayed off these rubber pads, uh, tire black, which is, or sorry, it's rubber black, which is a nice little black. It's XF85, but I don't just use it for tires or rubber. I use it because it for a lot of black things because it just seems to reflect light nicely, like a real black would. But anyway, um, like I mean, in terms of seeing it in the real world, like if you look at a tire on a car, like you think black, but it's not flat black, like like they're gray, actually, if you really look at light and shadow. But anyway, so what I did was, is once I got these based out with Tamiya, is I took uh, some light colors of just light gray Vallejo. Like, I mean, there's five, six, seven, eight different colors that you can use there. Like, it really doesn't matter. Just like a pale white just to create a bit of a tide mark. And then I started stabbing in like, you know, Sinai gray and just trying to create some flood marks. And then I came back with, um, I didn't like it that much. So I came back with this flat white tinted with deck tan. So it was just sort of a beige and I re airbrushed it over. I just etched the bottom, right? Like on the fronts too. I peeled the tape off the rubber pads on the front because I wanted to get some tide marks on there. Because, you know, like this stuff here that you see, like this is all silt from the Fraser River. Like it looks chocolate brown almost when it's wet, but when it dries in the sun, it goes this pale, pale white like that. That's the way that stuff is. So I've yet to, I'm gonna flood in uh, some Sinai gray or dark cement brown at the end, just along the bottom to show the wet, like the tide, you know, like the water level there. But man, these things were really a challenge, but I love it though. But having to videotape, stop, go, stop, go, it just, it just wiped me out. I just dropped everything, walked away. It was just not working. So um, now here's the, here's how I got this orangey kind of, like I'm not going to do it exactly like the prototype because I don't like too much orange on a model. It never really looks that great if you try to copy the prototype for some reason. So, especially in this case, and I didn't want that strong of orange, but I wasn't satisfied with just the red hull brown. So what I did was I just took some straight orange from Tamiya, which is this color right here, orange X6. It's not flat, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to flat coat it anyway. And if you add flat colors to the orange to tint it, it, it brings it down to a type of a satin finish. So I just want to show you this, how I finished this. So this is 5% orange and 95% IPA. Okay, it's just tinted, right? And then I test it on the paper. See? See there? All these colors, they're very thin, right? That's what I do. And so that's the key. So the key with this kind of rust color, like, like I tried it several times, I was trying to get it right. And then I just decided, because I was mixing different rust colors, I said, I'm just going to go straight orange like a transparency. Because IPA is the best way to cheat uh, acrylics into transparency. It's just an artificial transparency. It's not real like an oil paint or a humbrol paint, oil-based, right? When you use mineral spirits. So I just got in there really thin, but I didn't get in close to, to create a flood, just to light dusting. Uh, on each one, super thin orange, just building it up.
Okay, so that's good for now. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna seal that. You can see here where the very light highlight caught the chain a little bit. I kind of like that actually. I know in some of the photos it shows that it's black, the chain, but we'll see, I'll revisit that later. But I kind of like little hints of rust like that, especially on chain. So what we'll do is we'll seal that in place and then we'll take it from there. We can put some darker washes again and then maybe some other highlights, but we'll have a look, right, and work on something else in the meantime. And then I thought, yep, that's it. That's what I was after. And that did it. See, so it's always a combination or a series of colors. Very, very thin once again. <laughs> Here I go again. You know, the broken record, right? Thin your paint. If you have an airbrush, this is the power of airbrush doing this. Like, and then if you do stuff by hand and you don't like it, you can come back, like I showed on the girders on the side, and you can just blend it away like a tiny bit. You just learn to cut in tiny bits. And you can feather it away. Man, oh man, you can create just unbelievable, like, look on your models, like if you like to weather, you know. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with the way these have turned out so far. I'm probably going to pick off a few of these galvanized links, um, you know. Uh, I blackened the chain down a bit because it wasn't super rusty. And strangely enough, the rope, I think they spray oxide uh, primer uh, on the rope too because I looked at the prototype and they were reddish brown like it looks like when they came by to paint them. It's that, um, you know, the same coating that they use on the bottom of ships, I believe. Anyway, forgot the name of it now. But anyway, pretty happy with that so far okay so i'll just fix up the bottom here and then flat coat them and call them done oh one other thing there's a little bit of uh tackle you know like tackle hanging off of these here and a bit of nautical kind of look uh, so i'll be doing that later on in the final detail stage when i come back and make a few more passes but just want to move forward and get onto the towers here and um, get this barge slip uh feature scene done eh? Okay. Yeah.